Hello everyone, welcome to Connected. I am Fabiana Espinosa and I'm ready to converse with Lina Votovesi. Lina is a climate change activist. Her work in the city of Lee in Finland has achieved amazing effective goals. In only seven years, the whole city was able to stop oil consumption and apply renewable energy. Find out how you can be a part of the change too. Connected starts right now. Lina Votovesi is the CEO of the development company Micropolis. The company drives the forerunner of climate-friendly municipalities, the town of E, and pilots solutions to the green growth of the north. Recently, BBC named E as the new climate hero of Europe. The European Commission has awarded Micropolis for the best European regional climate actions. Lina holds a MA from the Oulu University, also having an academic background from the George August Universität Göttingen in Germany and the University of Namibia. She is a permanent advisor of the board of the Storm Warning II. It is my pleasure today to introduce Lina Votovesi, who is talking to us all the way from Finland. Lina, I cannot be more grateful, grateful for having you here today, and thank you for taking the time to be with us. Welcome to Connected, and let's go with the first question. Please tell us, how did your life lead you towards the path of climate action? Uh, thank you uh, for having me here. It's, it's wonderful to be with you from all the way from the Arctic. It is a very good question. Um, I am that generation of Finnish people um, that we have been traveling a lot and I've been studying all around the world. And I think it was the point when I was studying at the University of Namibia in Africa that I first really got attached to the question of climate change seeing this completely different kind of world with the desert and people people living there with this very dry climate and um, since then it has been something very close close to my heart and um, i've been very lucky to be able to work uh, with the issue of climate uh, the past years i see it's big a difference from where you are right now in africa right Yes. That's the beauty of our beautiful world. Like we have so many different um, regions and colors and it's just beautiful. Tell us a little more about the development company Micropolis and the work you have done there. Uh, Micropolis is a company uh, in which we aim to create growth uh, out of climate actions. So we, we aim to help uh, municipalities, cities, um, other companies on their path to do um, this green growth. So, so to set, for example, to have from renewable energies. I see. And how did you, because this is such a big topic, not, I mean, today it's bigger than ever, but this climate, um, the climate action has been happening like your company and different companies in the world for a long, long time. Now, you guys even managed to implement it in schools. So how did you do that and what are the kids taught? Well, um, the city where we pilot most of our work is called the city of E. So it is really double I, E. And in the city of E, we were first uh, piloting with three schools, the so-called 50-50 method. So it means that the children themselves are measuring the use of water, heat and electricity in the school building. And at the end of the year, we count how much they have saved and then they get 50% back of the savings and can decide themselves where they use it to. And as the children were all so excited about this and they got really energized, energized about this idea, 
So we really wanted then to have it to all schools and all nurseries. So now it means that every child in the city of E is using this method. And I think what is really nice is that they also learn that it makes sense to be energy uh, efficient and climate friendly, that it also means that they get 50% of these savings back to themselves. I see. So basically it's, it's more, I could say that it's accountability, right? Because sometimes in our day by day, we feel like, okay, I'm not throwing my plastic or I'm not doing that, this or that. But at the end of the day, you don't really see how much is your impact. And I feel like people on that goal, they kind of lo lose interest because you're not really seeing your impact or you're not, you know, you don't have a number or something that shows you how much you've helped or how much you've done. Yes, yes. And uh, we have measured very well from the beginning on the impact of the climate actions. And uh, we have really count that it, it brings a lot for the community. So it's not a cost, but it's a big profit for these little communities and, and for everyone. So the more you think about it, the more you do it in your everyday life, the more it also uh, gets profit for yourself. And most of all, it gives you such a good feeling because all of us, we want to do something good. And to be climate friendly is a very easy way to also share this well-being all over to yourself and to the others. Right. And then, Lina, tell me a little more about the city of Lee. Because you guys have changed, right? You guys um, accomplished a lot in the past years. So tell me how, I mean, I want to say specifically, because it's very difficult to change not only the habits of the people, but also uh, the ways of working of a city. So how was Lee, I don't know, like five, ten years ago, and how it is today? Oh, that is a very good question. Thank you for that. Um, I would say that um, the biggest impact actually to E with all this climate work has been the sense of community. So people feel that this is the way we do things in E, the culture of being in E, to be climate friendly and to be think about environment so it's also bringing people together uh, it is also a lot about sharing economy you know that not everybody needs to own a car but you can share rights you can go together and i think at these times where many people are lonely it's, it's very important to have these shared uh, uh, visions and missions and it's really bringing a lot also into well-being and jobs of course we have created a, a complete sector of jobs due to climate action a new business for the companies in e and uh, we have received quite a lot of investments also that we wouldn't have otherwise so it, it has been a big uh, boost for the complete economy and all the people in e i see and when we go back to the classrooms what uh, are the kids taught uh, or i don't know if there are habits or our values because you know before when we went to school we definitely did not have that type of education so tell us a little bit a little more about what happens in the classroom yes in the classrooms well every single uh, pupil in the school is being uh, very careful about, for example, the lights. Are, are the lights on or off? Do they really need to be on? So it's all these small steps that matter. Um, they are very careful about, for example, food, how much food waste they create, so they try to create no waste. And I think um, the most important thing with the schools is that as the children are taught the basics of climate change and climate friendly living, they bring it so much further themselves. So they have these beautiful stories, what they do themselves, and they bring it also to their homes. So it's also something we hear, we hear many times that families are climate friendly because children are bringing it um, to their homes from the school. Right, and it's an important part because um, there are so many things involved when we talk about uh, you know, the, the climate and the, the laws and all the things that go along, a lot of government and, you know, 
having the part of a community that comes, you know, from our side, uh, educated people that would like to make a change, it's a big, big step. Um, I know that the first National Climate Festival in Lee happened a few days ago, I think five or six. Please tell us and share with us the results of the session with all the presidents of the political parties in st standing for their climate promises. What happened there? What happened was that we had a very exciting and very burning discussion on climate change. But what was the most important result is that all the political parties in Finland do acknowledge the, the urgent need that we have to make actions. And this is, as Finland is now the president of European Union uh, for, for this period, it is very important that we also try to implement it to the complete Europe, European Union to do it. So uh, Finland is having now uh, one of the most ambitious, ambitious targets of the world uh, for climate uh, uh, change mitigation. And everybody believes that we can do it and we need to do it. Yes, exactly. And it's really um, refreshing and it gives a little hope to see an example like the city of Lee, because like right now, South America is suffering one of the biggest, the largest disasters that could ever happen to us with the fire in the Amazon. So, you know, after these moments and everything we have seen, sometimes we just, you know, you, you are hopeless. People just feel like, you know, there is no way out. We see the level of plastic consumption and all other mm. things that comes among society. So like when we participate, like you have the, had the chance to be with the, the men or the groups that are the ones that can make a, a real or a more possible change. Is there anything you can tell us that you saw or you heard being said over there? I think the most important in what comes to climate change is to understand that it's not about expertise and it's not about resources. It is most of all about the will. So if communities decide to make a change and to live a more climate, a positive way of life, it is possible for everyone in this world. And I must say, um, what comes to the climate arena and the meeting with all the political parties that we were discussing a lot about Amazon and what is happening there now. And everybody just kept saying how important it is for the world that with these burns get finished. From your experience, how do we build a well-being in the future? Let's say we have so many um, like right now you work with the kids, like they're very young, but we still have a lot of people that are bringing new generations right now. They're 20, they're 16, and they are looking for guidance. They are looking for, okay, what can we, what can I do? You know, a, a girl that has a job, a husband, two kids, and it does have a, 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 a normal life that, you know, with obligations, but how do, how do, how can they implement from your experience, what would you say they can implement in their lives in order to make a change? Well, there are very easy ways to everyday life. For example, about transportation. To always think about if you are moving from place uh, one to place B to see how you move and what is the most climate friendly uh, way for that. For example, bicycling. It's such a great feeling to be outside and bicycle in, in the fresh air to, to do that instead of, of taking the car, so for example. And to share things, to also think, do I need to own everything? Can I share it with my friends? If I need a new equipment, can I get it used from somewhere and can I share it with my friends? Not that everybody owns this specific equipment, but if we share it. So I think these are very practical matters, but I would say the most important thing is the education with the children. Because in children we do have the hope of the world. And I, I just cannot wait this moment where the children in E, when they grow up and they've been for 15 years working for a better environment, and one day they will take the lead and they will be so much more wiser. And uh, I think they will make the big change in the world. For example, in our case, uh, a big change has been that we got rid of oil. 
that we are not heating anything with oil anymore. And this is something that we realized in E, that if we heat with oil, we only get lots of emissions. And this uh, little uh, two euros of cup of coffee of the truck driver who brings in the oil. And when we instead turned into using renewable energies, these renewable energies are bringing then business and jobs to the local economy. So instead of paying for oil that comes from outside of Finland, we use now bioenergies and local energies and then create jobs. So this is possible everywhere in the world. How long ago you guys been able to do the switch? And how was the process of going from oil to uh, renewable energy? Well, we began 2012 and since then it has been quite rapid and actually quite easy. So it is not um, such a big process, it is most of all about the will. If you decide to do it, you can do it. And I would say that for the local politicians, for the local officers, it has been very important that we have showed these numbers. What it means in numbers for the local economy, how many jobs can we create and, and, and how much income does it bring for the business. So what is important is that you count and you show the results for the complete community. And then people begin to understand it also with their own houses. And when you tell us renewable energy, what is it exactly that you guys uh, use? Yes, we use wind energy a lot, so that is one. Solar energy also, bioenergies a bit, and then hydro energy, so water. But mainly wind and solar in E. And uh, it took you guys from 2012, uh, seven years to make the change. And there is no, no houses, no businesses, nothing um, in, in the city of Lee that will use uh, the, uh, the, um, the oil as for yes. anything. Yes, yes, it is so oil safe. That is so great to hear. It's really, really, and it didn't take us so many times, so many years. Mm. Lina, um, just to start uh, wrapping up the interview, um, yes. I would like first to thank you. And also, this is a thank topic you. that is very, very large and there, it, has differ, it, it has many points that we could talk a lot about. So in case people uh, would like to learn more about the city of Lee, where can they read more about it or does access a page or articles or whatever you can share with us? Yes, uh, in our web pages, micropolis.fi, you can find some information, of course, on Facebook, and then, of course, the city pages, so uh, www.e.fi. So there you find information. Of course, I will be happy personally to, to help further with, with any request of information, of course. Thank you, Lina, so much. And I send you a big kiss all the way to Finland. I hope you're always well and we'll be in touch. Thank you so much for the interview. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you so much. All the best for you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Every day is a new opportunity to start that pending project or to change a habit or to learn a new way to do something that will contribute to the well-being of our planet. On one hand, we are surrounded with bad news and natural disasters happening all over the world. On the other, we have the control to change our own habits, our own way to do things. Never underestimate the impact of your actions. To connect with me, write me an email or send me a private message on my Facebook page. Stay connected and until next time, bye-bye.